I'm commonly asked what kind of exercise headache and migraine patients can get away with and not blow up their symptoms. And there are certain ones you can and can do. I'd say the ones that are taboo that you should not do would be long walks or treadmill or jogging because your head is like an eight pound bowling ball on top of very irritable joints in your neck. And it's like a jackhammer, boom, boom, boom. Every time your heel hits the ground, uh, it creates that jackhammer-like effect and sets off inflammation. Uh, road bikes are rough just because, uh, not the more upright ones so much, but the ones where people are bent over with their heads jacked up like that. They're horizontal with an eight pound head in space and tilting their face up like this just crams all the joints together. So that's not the greatest. And swimming seemingly, oh, that'd be great because it's unloaded, I'm floating, but you're really not floating. I mean, your head hopefully doesn't float. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's solid. So when your neck is stuck out in space like this, think of an eight pound bowling ball and your neck is supporting the whole thing and you're turning it over and over to breathe and uh, it's load plus rotation just really flares your neck up. So not a great idea if you're having headaches and migraines. Planks are kind of rough too because the same deal. You're horizontal with your elbows here and your head's hanging in space and these muscles back here contract very hard, very similar to yoga and uh, Pilates kind of postures that you get into. And abs are rough because same deal. You're laying on your back and you're contracting the muscles in the front of your neck, pulling yourself up over and over. And you can work your abs different ways like laying on your back and holding onto a bench or on the floor and letting your legs down and pulling them up or hanging from a bar and pulling your knees up, that sort of thing. Maybe not real fun, but effective at getting um, at your abs. And lastly of the taboos would be free weights that when you're holding free weights, dumbbells, bars, they go up through your neck and they just jam everything together. Kettlebells, the things people do with them, it's wonderful for stabilization but really rough on the neck uh, in the short run anyway. And the things that are okay on the other end would be say machines. Uh, most all machines except overhead press, which is shoulders, and uh, shoulder like abduction like this, which is going to contract. Both are going to contract your neck uh, pretty hard. But as far as like pushing for chest, pulling for lats, pull down for lats, the bicep machine, pushing down for triceps, all those, and all the leg stuff uh, generally, uh, other than I guess squats with super heavy weight, you can get away with that too. And then a stationary bike where you're more upright, like you just have your arms hanging by your side even in a spin class as opposed to leaning forward, you just stay more upright than the person next to you. Or if you're riding a regular bike that you're just more upright and you have to pay attention if the imperfections in the road or whatever you're riding on jar your neck too much and set off inflammation, but you'll figure that out pretty quickly. And recumbent bikes are like the gentlest thing to do. They're, they're the ones that have the seat on it and you in a gym and you lean back and you pedal with the seat uh, position such that your legs end up at like 45 degrees down below you and everything's neutral. There's no bouncing around. There's no movement really. And they're not horrible if you, uh, I, I use them often where you can just sit and throw an iP uh, iPad in front of you or whatever and just read or you could watch TV as long as you're not, your neck's not cranked up. And, and really kind of the, the ultimate, I think, gym machine that my patients like is elliptical uh, because it's not too bouncy and they try it with the arms and without the arms and if with the arms it flares the joints up then they don't do it with the arms until their neck calms down. But the movement with the arms, if you can get away with it, it does flush the joints out in your neck because joints get circulation through movement. So if you move them, they flush out and inflammation heals faster. I think that's it.